welcome to Trinity College's Open Day. You're here at the General Science Talk, and I'm Professor Graham Watson. I'm the Science Course Director, so it's my job to coordinate the rather complicated science programme, which I'll describe to you in this presentation. So the main part of my job is to run the Science Course Office that does the coordination and our primary responsibility is for this general entry TR071 science programme. Uh, so we coordinate this programme across all of the schools and the disciplines within science that contribute to this programme. And if you want specific information about the particular disciplines and subjects, then down the far end of the atrium, all of the schools and disciplines have a, a stand with members of staff and students from those schools who will give you more information, detailed information about what they do. The Science Course Office handles the student's uh, module registration uh, and aspects like that, and in terms of class splits, with 340 students intake into TR071, not everyone can do their chemistry lab at the same time, so we split students up. Every student has an individual timetable with the particular labs that they attend and the tutorials, etc. The other thing the Science Course Office checks is that it keeps the course up to date. So the course is constantly evolving in terms of its content and the way that we teach it. And it collates feedback both from staff and students. Uh, and I guess very importantly, the Science Course Office is the point of contact for the student. In a general entry course like this, you're not associated with a particular school or discipline, and so the science course office is that central contact point that all the students can come to to sort out issues and problems. Now, the science course office itself runs the science course web page, and there's aspects for prospective students, but we also give information for current students through this, uh, and there's lots of information about the details of the course structure that you can have a look at on there. We provide detailed course booklets for our students, and these are available for anybody to look at in terms of the course content and the structure. Uh, in addition, in the prospective students part of this, there's actually a nice little video that we made uh, earlier in the year, which has uh, some of our students talking about why they study in science, why they came to Trinity, and something a little bit about the specialist subjects that they're interested in. It's quite, know, a, quite a nice little like video and gives you a student perspective an on the experience. course. So hopefully you're all here because you're interested in studying science and hopefully I haven't got to do too hard a sell on, on, on that part. Um, there's the obvious part of why to study science is the, the, the specific technical and scientific knowledge and that's in strong demand in the Irish economy. But in addition to that, science and the science subjects have a particular way of looking at things. It's very analytical and logical, and is a critical approach to actually analysing things. And that type of skill is very, very important in, mod in the modern world. And so a science course provides you with that type of insight and, and, and thought process uh, for your future career. We're also, within the science course, we also have obviously a lot of individual work, but we have teamwork, and teamwork is a very important part of the modern uh, environment as well. And that's something that, that all employers are often very keen to see within these types of courses. And beyond that, the changing environment, the inc increasing scientific knowledge is useful for, for just general society particularly in terms of things like policy making and understanding how people impact on the world. Career opportunities are extremely wide from the science programme, partly because we have lots of different subjects, but partly because the training that science gets that I've already talked about can be utilised in a whole range of, if you like, the non-scientific area of things. So, this is just a list of some of the things that people have gone into from the science programme in recent years. It includes some of the obvious ones, such as the chemical and pharmaceutical sectors, um, or zoo and wildlife management. But it also includes, I guess, less direct IT business, uh, telecommunications, law even. 
So this type of training is very useful in a whole broad range of, of, of um, careers. So I guess what's perhaps a slightly harder sell for me is why study science at Trinity? There are obviously other options within Ireland. Trinity is very committed to a research-led teaching. Okay, and research-led teaching basically means that we have world leaders in their fields who are pushing forward the boundaries of their particular subject and their discipline, and that these are strongly embedded within the teaching environment at Trinity. So these uh, professors will um, contribute to the teaching and bring a lot of the modern new aspects of their particular discipline into the teaching. So the course is constantly being renewed through bringing the research into the teaching environment. We have excellent lab facilities. Science is a practical subject. And so getting that training in the practical aspects is very, very important. And we have very good facilities for, for that. The third point is unit, Trinity is very high in the global rankings. That might not seem so obvious as to why that's important. If you want to take your degree abroad, then how the university is perceived there is actually very important. And obviously, global rankings is one of the ways in which uh, people from other countries actually get a perception of the university that you're studying at. And Trinity does very well in that respect. One of the things we're very proud of in Trinity is that we still have very deep, very strong, detailed research projects as part of the program. So every final year student in science will undergo a research project in the research groups of these research leaders. So they will be embedded into the research environment, often for a, a whole semester. Sometimes it's spread across multiple semesters, but there is a long research project in the final year where people will learn about research and do independent work. And independent work in, an, in, a, in a field where the, the results are not known. It's not simply a lab where you uh, reproduce results that uh, are already known. You're actually going to do new research, something no one has ever done before. I've already said we've got good lab facilities, but I, I guess one of the important things is that practical aspect is an integral part of the program, both field work and laboratory work. So in the field, things like geology, geography, zoology, plant sciences, they'll go out into the field and, and apply the knowledge uh, within the field. And then in, in the laboratory-based subjects, chemistry, biochemistry, physics, then you'll obviously do detailed uh, laboratory work in terms of the, the course and uh, the training. We have dedicated administrative support. The science course office is very important in the first few years. There is a place where you can come and get advice, both academic and non-academic, about what's going on. If you have a problem with anything, they will sort you out very quickly. Um, in addition, once you specialize in terms of subjects, then every school and discipline has their own office to support the students as well. We're continuously updating and revising the course, partly because it's research-led, and partly because we obviously need to move forward with the times and uh, give a quality qualification, a quality education that people are looking for. The support doesn't just come from the schools. We have a tutorial system at Trinity where everybody is assigned a personal tutor. So if you have any issues you don't want to speak to the academics about, there is a personal tutor who is probably not teaching you, who can, you can go to for independent advice. And these tutors also uh, provide you a voice in college. If you have a problem, they can articulate that problem for you uh, and uh, hopefully get things done about it. And I guess one of the most important things, and I'll, I'll concentrate on this, is that the degree in science offers a very wide range of choice. There's very, very flexible. There's different ways in which different students can tailor the program to suit their interests and their needs. So I'm primarily talking about TR071 Science, which is the common entry science program. 340 students enter Trinity through that program. There are some direct entry courses. I'm not going to talk about the maths and theoretical physics. They're dealt with separately. 
But these direct entry courses, human genetics, chemistry with molecular modeling, medicinal chemistry, nanoscience, and earth sciences, they're small numbers of students in these, but they basically use the science course modules uh, to construct specialized courses in those particular areas. So most of the students come in through this common entry. And within this common entry, you do general modules in the first two years, which you choose, and there's flexibility for that. And then you specialize in a particular subject for the third and fourth year. And these are the subjects that we have at the moment. Uh, I won't run through them, but you know, there's a whole wide range of subjects. Some of them are, 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 have been developed as part of the, this research-led teaching. So something like immunology and neuroscience, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been talking about those moderatorships because they didn't exist, those specialized subjects. They've been developed in part due to this research-led teaching where we're all constantly uh, updating the, the syllabus. So in first year, you get a completely free choice of modules. So these are all the modules. So we've got two biology, two chemistry, two geography, geology, maths, and physics. There's a free choice of these modules. But the choice you make has an impact on what you can study later. Now, clearly, if you want to specialize in chemistry, then you've got to take chemistry in the first year. I mean, it stands to sense, it just makes sense. So you have free choice, but there are implications of your choice for future years. And I'll try and describe some of those in a moment. Before I go on, I just want to give you a quick rundown of the term structure at Trinity. So uh, if you decide to come to Trinity and, and, and arrive, then the first week before any teaching starts is called Freshers' Week. And in that, we will give you an induction into the course, but also into college life in terms of student societies you can join and all of those sorts of aspects of college as well. After Freshers' Week, we go into the first semester. The semester is 12 weeks. The first six weeks are a standard teaching weeks where you do labs, lectures, uh, and have tutorials. We then have one week which is referred to as study week. Here there are no lectures or labs or tutorials, and there are uh, one or two uh, small aspects of teaching there, but generally it's there for, to, for students to catch up and to make sure they're, they're up to date. We then have another five weeks of teaching, and that takes us up to the Christmas vacation. And the thing I should note for you is there are no semester exams at Trinity. So we go straight into another semester after Christmas. It looks exactly the same. There is then a, a three-week revision period, which usually includes Easter. And then we have a four-week exam period where the exams are on both semesters' modules. So all the exams are at the end of the year. We then have a number of weeks where all the staff get to uh, mark all of the exams and come up with the final results for the students. So that's the structure. So we have two semesters of teaching and the modules are either within one semester or the other. So if we look at that in terms of the science course, here are all the modules now put within semester one and semester two. And to try and explain the flexibility and the constraints of the system, uh, what we've come up with is four different patterns to explain the different uh, options. So pattern one has maths and physics in both semesters, so that's 40 credits. There are only 20 credits left because there's 60 credits in a year. And so you can choose one in the first semester and one in the second semester. And the choice you make will depend on what you can study later. If, for instance, you choose chemistry for both semesters, then obviously you can go on and study maths, physics, and chemistry. Um, it's not so uh, possible to, it's actually possible to study biology, but some of the specialized subjects require you to do biology in first year, and so they are no longer open to you. It's a system called prerequisites. You can actually do biochemistry, immunology, and molecular medicine, and neuroscience. And actually, you do these by choosing chemistry, not biology. These do not require you to have first year bi biology, although I would personally recommend it. So that's why it says it's not recommended. What you set definitely can't do with this pattern 
is genetics and microbiology because those two subjects require you to do first year chemistry and first year biology and you can't fit them in if you're doing maths and physics. So that's the constraint. There's lots of flexibility but you have to think about the choice. The second pattern has just maths and so we've got lots of flexibility here. Again, what you choose depends on what you can do later. So if you're interested, say, specifically in microbiology in third and fourth year, then you would have to, in addition to the maths, take the two chemistry modules and the first biology module. You don't actually have to take the second one. <coughs> now, that's not quite all the credits, so there's a little bit more flexibility in terms of other modules that you can take as well for interest or to have other options available to you later. What you can't take is physics and astrophysics because we removed the physics from this pattern. Pattern three has only one semester of maths, which is, um, allows even more flexibility. So there's lots of degree options that you can do, but obviously it depends on exactly what you want to do. Chemistry is a nice easy one. Once you've got one semester of maths, the only requirement for chemistry is that you do the chemistry. So that's 20 credits, that's 30 credits. You've got 30 credits of flexibility to do whatever you like. Again, you can't do physics or physics with astrophysics here. Pattern four has no maths in it. It's not a recommended pattern because most of the subjects in third and fourth year require you to have done some mathematics. The, the environmental sciences, geography, geology, and plant sciences are the only four um, specialized subjects that you can take having had done no maths. So it's not recommended. It's a whole swathe of subjects that you can't take because you haven't done the maths. Now, what I've probably done, and what I do most years, is just confuse everybody with the amount of choice and the constraints. Now, part of the reason for me doing that is to explain to you how the course is, is structured, but also to show you that there is that very strong flexibility, but it does have implications. And I don't expect people to go away and uh, understand what this means, but what we do do is when students are signed up, during the orientation, we take this very seriously. We want students to be in the right modules, to give them the right options later, and to give them the type of course that is suitable for them. And so the way we do that is at the initial orientation in Freshers' Week, before the lectures have started, we'll have the talks from various disciplines, and the science course director will give a general talk about the structure again. But the disciplines will explain what they do within their subjects, and then every student gets a one-to-one -one meeting with an academic in that freshers' week. And so every student will discuss with that academic what their interests in, where they think they're going with the degree, just general areas, because we don't want to restrict people down to one choice. General areas, and then with that discussion, there'll be advice about which modules are the most appropriate for that student. Okay, so we take that very, very seriously, but we also give flexibility. So within the first semester, within the first few weeks, if a student has signed up for a particular module and they actually discover that it's not really what they want to be doing, so let's say they sign up for physics and two weeks in, they realize that they can't cope with the physics and they sh really shouldn't have signed up for it. If it's within the first few weeks, we allow that flexibility. They can jump from one module to another. After about that, then it's hard to catch up. Um, but what we do do is allow them to modify the second semester choice right up till Christmas. So they could finish the first physics module and then duck out of it and not do the second physics module. So it's, a, it's about flexibility, but it's also about advice as well. That's very, very important for the, for the science course in getting students into the right modules and on the right path through the course. Now, the dreaded leave insert points. So this shows you the leave insert points both for the, the common entry science, which obviously has a lot, large number of students, but also for the direct entries, which have much smaller numbers and then therefore tend to have a little bit more volatility in the points. So science has actually been gradually going up. I wouldn't worry too much. Bonus points were only introduced in 2012 for math, high level mathematics. 
So 25 point, that jump of 30, 25 of it is down to the bonus points in maths, really. Most students, not all, it's not a requirement to have higher level maths in the science course, but most students tend to have higher level maths. So this increase is, is, is the bonus points, and so overall we're getting a, a slight increase in the points over the last few years. It's high at 515, particularly when you consider there's 340 students taken in. As I said, the direct entry courses are a little bit more volatile. Some of them are slightly above science, some are slightly below. Nanoscience has gone a bit crazy in the last couple of years. I'm not entirely sure why. You can see that it's actually come from below science to above science. I can't explain it to myself, but um, there you go. Um, and, and, you know, the, these, these courses are just based on the science modules. So, I mean, it's not a different, it's not a different set of lecturers you're going to see or a different set of um, uh, subjects you'll see. Nanoscience is primarily physics and chemistry. If you haven't been down the far end of the atrium, We've got all of the subjects and all of the disciplines are down there with a stand, with members of staff. Some students are down there as well that you can talk to and get a little bit more information about their particular subjects. Okay, so that's all I've got going to say this morning. Thank you. <laughs>